Hello, everyone, and welcome to our third renewable energy webinar. So today, we will be showing you how to manage your renewable energy network using ArcGIS Utility Network. So my name is Alessandra Milliken, and my colleague Jeff Allen and I will be your hosts today, facilitating today's webinar. And on behalf of us and everyone else at Web Esri, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, and we're really excited for what we have for you today. Before we get started, please take a moment to note the webinar control panel on your screen. I would like you to, like to encourage you to post any questions you have throughout the webinar. We have some staff who will be answering those and we'll be addressing questions at the end. Um, and again, you know, it's being recorded today. So if you're joining us later, uh, welcome in the future. Otherwise, um, feel free to keep this on and learn lots of information and submit your questions as we go forward. Okay, so in case this is your first time joining us, this again is our third renewable energy webinar this year. So in our first webinar, we reviewed how the ESRI technology can be used for site suitability analysis and understanding what potential project sites have the best, you know, potential for your wind or solar portfolio. And then in our second webinar, we leveraged the site suitability analysis we did in the first webinar to aid in the design process. And we really discuss how to optimize designs of renewable energy projects to gain operational efficiency, unlock the power of GIS within Autodesk products, and even gain instant access to construction progress and issues directly from our employees in the field. So you may notice a bit of a pattern with these webinars. We're kind of going through the life cycle of typical renewable energy projects, and we're now really shifting to that operations phase where assets are, you know, construction, in operations, and all of those years we've spent doing site suitability analysis, design, and construction has come to fruition. So maybe the fastest renewable energy project in existence here. So we really create these webinars based on what you, our power users, use the technology to accomplish every day. And um, today we're covering ArcGIS Utility Network. And before you panic, um, I am your account manager. I know a lot of you probably aren't using this product, but that's why we put on this webinar. We're here to sometimes make you a little bit uncomfortable and show you what is possible with the technology to help you improve your workflows and really bring that business value to your organization. So we'll be talking about what the ArcGIS Utility Network is. We'll view thematic cartographic maps for different use cases like customer service, field collection and inspection, or even distribution management. We're going to view inside complex assemblies of lines and devices and manage how these assets are connected within them. We'll really use that analysis and tracing tools to perform a large variety of analytic workflows. And we will mo model multiple utility systems within one utility network and run tracing analysis across all of them. A bit more context before we get started. So in the ArcGIS platform, there are usually nine common, common patterns of usage we see across organizations that they use GIS to achieve. So today we are really focusing on that data management piece of those common patterns. So data in the energy industry is really our gold and the foundation upon which we see that huge return of investment. So without the ability to collect, organize, and maintain accurate locations and details about assets and resources, everything else can fall apart. That's why it's so important. And additionally, the renewable energy industry has changed so much over the last um, 50 years, even the last five or couple of years, and will continue to rapidly change. And none of us are naive to the challenges we face in this industry. So Customer demand is not only increasing, but changing on a daily basis. That ability, uh, availability of power and uncertainty in renewable energy production makes those integrations so much more complex. Um, we as energy producers need that real-time awareness as to what's happening outside of our office or now that we're working from home, outside of our homes, where all that energy production happens. Or, you know, who would have thought even factors like a global pandemic we face head on or climate change that continues to wreak havoc um, with more and more weather related emergencies that we have to battle every year. 
So all of that is why we need to work smarter, not harder. And as always, us Esri are here to help you with that process. So all of those challenges I mentioned and all of the challenges I even didn't mention are really the business drivers for digital transformation of data management. Because these challenges require new technologies. And with the ArcGIS utility network, along with the ArcGIS platform, that will allow us to maintain more accurate, timely, and complete data and have faster and more efficient processes to manage the input or data of collection of data. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Jeff Allen. Cool, thanks Alessandra. And thanks everybody for joining today. Just share my PowerPoint. Cool, so picking up on those themes that uh, Alessandra mentioned in the opening, I kind of want to build around that idea of, you know, why this is important from a perspective of a renewable energy company, right? So what we're really talking about is as we migrate out of the design planning construction phase, there's a lot of operational things that happen within your organization, right? And we look at those and we look at all these things that you want to do. And if we kind of trace all those back, they all start with having this foundational platform, this single version of the truth about your assets. And so from that single version of the truth, we then look at the different areas within the organization and how they are going to leverage that data, whether that be you know crew safety or hazardous material safety, grid modernization, actually monitoring those assets. Um, engaging with customers or actually looking at some new innovative techniques like machine learning and AR and 3D to be able to, to gain knowledge and insights about those facilities. So we really see this and what we're presenting today is a foundation and a jumping off point to all these things that you would do within the organization, leveraging that central uh, platform for those for that work. But really, when we, when we look at that central platform, that single version of the truth, and we look at how we modernize that beyond just points and lines on the map, there's some key tenants to that uh, asset management and network management. Um, advanced network modeling, how things are connected, basically building these ideas of smart devices. How can we enable different visualizations of that data, not just putting uh, lines on the map, but looking at circuits and looking at the health of assets and, and how things are interact with each other and really make that data pervasive across the organization. And to that point, when we say making it pervasive, you know, we want to make this same data available on the desktop for the power users that are doing analytics. Also, the rest of the organization, the non-GIS professionals that might be accessing this data through a web interface or through the portal, and then being able to push that same data set out into the mobile applications, right? Both connected and disconnected views of those assets out in the field, and really not have to make any copies of the data as we do this. We want everybody pointing back to that central repository and be able to leverage that uh, foundation in all these different platforms equally. So when we look at, the, you know, specifically the tool that we're going to be talking about today, the ArcGIS Utility Network, which is the extension to the ArcGIS platform, it brings in a couple of pillars uh, that are key and a couple of functionality that I'm really going to kind of highlight today. Obviously, we're a GIS company, so mapping is is at the forefront, but different ways to visualize data on the map, um, and then that. Visualization on the map also extends into other ways that we can visualize data. So diagrams or schematics, uh, being able to produce these diagrams and schematic from the mapping data and not having a disconnected, say, AutoCAD or other type of drawing of that information is key to having that sort of connected single source of truth. So we can generate schematics. We can also dive into components, right? So one of the problems we've always had with a flat 2D map is, you know, as that map gets congested and as we add more and more details about that sort of digital twin, we need different ways to be able to visualize that. So having components or GIS within a GIS is a, is a key component of the utility network. Also advanced analytics, right? So not uh, how are things connected together? What are, how are devices operating? You know, is a transformer uh, really, you know, just a point on the map or does it have a, a low side and a high side and how does that connect to the, to the circuits on either side of it? We also enable this ability of planned views, 
right? So things that are in planning stages, but not quite into production, overlaid with in-service or in-production assets, as well as historical views of those as well. So be able to kind of bring in the concept of time into the model. And then more and more customers are looking to visualize that data in three dimensions as well. So be able to add elevation, be able to go inside buildings and see how things look in 3D, all pulling from that same source. So these are the kind of key functional components that you will add to your platform by sort of turning on this utility network functionality uh, in, uh, in ArcGIS Pro. So inside of this utility network, we actually have a number of uh, domains that we've built up. So instead of having to start from scratch, we actually produce some templates for you. So we've got templates for all the phases of the electric industry, gas industry, and water industry that you can download free templates for our website to get started. And so those are expressed as what we call solution templates. So they include documentation, they include a baseline schema, they include attribute or business rules, uh, behaviors of devices, some sample data, and tools to get your data loaded into it. So quite a bit you can download. We've got a link there to the solution site, um, which is also integrated into the ArcGIS Pro, which I'll see, show you for a second. So as you see the demo and you, you see what we're doing, what I've basically done is take the sort of electric demo uh, for this particular uh, example, deployed it onto my machine and built a, a solar sample for around that uh, using the out of the box rules and out of the box data space schema. So when you open up this, uh, this template, what you get is a, a, a version of this uh, template that can be deployed into your enterprise geodatabase, which comes with a basic structure around it. And the way the utility network structure works is that we have different domains. And these domains can actually live together in the, uh, in the utility network. So uh, we're going to be focused on the electric domain today, but if I had other types of assets that I also wanted to manage, I can actually manage them all in a single centralized enterprise database. Now those domains share a common set of features called structures, right? So these are things that don't necessarily uh, control the flow of the commodity, but are attached. In the electric example, these would be things like oh, poles or arrays or buildings that have uh, information inside of those. And I'll show you some examples of structures. But basically, the utility network is quite fundamentally simple. Inside of those domains, we have some basic five basic feature classes. We have devices, things that control the flow. We have the lines that connect those devices. We have junctions, which are the interconnection points of those lines. We have assemblies that are sort of the building up of, of larger components. And we have what thing called subnetworks, which allow us to do interesting things like managing circuits and, and seeing the different, uh, the different ways that those, these components are connected. But basically, these are the basic building blocks that we use to build up a utility network. And these are what's included inside that, uh, that template that we deploy to you. You also see in the upper right hand corner, we also deploy a rule base. So this is a template set of business rules that are that come with the information model that you can modify. You can add rules, you sub subtract rules, but it comes fairly well built out. And that's really a kind of an important tenant of the utility network. Uh, this goes beyond just uh, putting GIS features into the database. This really comes to start building rules to protect that data as it goes into the into the geodatabase. Now, we've had different ways to deploy this business logic in the past, but typically that business logic has sat on the client side. So we might create some Python script or some data QA, QC tools or other type of things that would sit on the desktop. So as I'm entering data, um, I would follow those business rules. But if I want those same rules to apply to say somebody capturing data in the field, I would then have to replicate all those rules out into that mobile device. What we've done with the utility network is we brought those rules to the server. So the server now contains that information, protects that data, regardless of how the data is going into the system. So whether I'm editing data from a desktop or a web application, or through my mobile device, or even through the APIs. So if I have a, another third-party application that's interacting with my GIS, everybody has to say by the common set of rules, and those rules protect the integrity of that underlying data. The other important part is this utility network uses ArcGIS Pro, 
right? It's an ArcGIS Pro only extension, but it does take advantage of all the native editing tools that are available in Pro. So if you're familiar with the Pro editing workflows or you're familiar with editing data through that interface, you're gonna be very comfortable with the utility network. Utility network simply adds those capabilities uh, that we want for connectivity and tracing and interacting with the rule base. But as I create features and I create objects, I'm using those out of the box tools. So your editors of the GIS data are gonna be very comfortable in this environment as they make the switch from just simple 2D maps to a, to a, a sort of integrated network. And so that comes with a couple advantages using the out of the box tool. One of those things is we can create editing templates, which are kind of collections of things. Like for example, when I place a three phase bank transformer that have all the individual components already pre-laid out. So I can really automate a lot of the editing with these templates, make sure I have all the components that I need, all the connectivity I need. So with one click, I can deploy a whole bunch of components uh, into the geo database. And then once I have them deployed, obviously configure them and customize them based on the individual location. But these editing templates are really the way that we automate and speed up a lot of this data entry into the model and make it easier for your users. We also have a concept in the utility network that's, that's quite key to the platform, which is this representation of real world objects. So for example, if I, if I sort of indulge you with this electric example, instead of having a transformer as a, as a single point on the map, this transformer now has features and properties that allow me to wire it in to the conductors that come into it. So I now have ports and junctions on this device that I had that have intelligence that I can now wire into the system. And when I wire this in, I get a whole bunch of new functionality. I understand how a uh, product is flowing. I understand uh, if that uh, the wires that are connecting to this transformer follow the rules that I've defined. So I pick up a lot of new capabilities by allowing these these features in the GIS to really represent their true representation in the real world. Now, once I have those devices entered into that system of record and I have everything connected, I can do some interesting analytics. And one of the key tenants of the utility network is to be able to trace through these objects. So a simple connected trace will allow me to go through the model and, and explore and see how, how the model is interconnected, how these devices and these conductors uh, play together. But then there's really some advanced tracing capabilities, like I can trace upstream and downstream on loops. I can look for controllers. Um, and these are basically uh, building blocks that allow you to build some very advanced analytics, like an outage management map or, uh, or some analytics on capacity. All these things start with this uh, strong connected network and a strong set of, of devices that have intelligence. And so we build up these devices. Now, the other cool thing about this tracing framework is this is available not only in the desktop tools, but I can actually replicate on the web viewer, the same technology, or even in a mobile environment as well. So if I have these sort of integrated uh, and, and intelligent traces, I can then push those out to the rest of the organization and make them part of my daily workflows. Another interesting, and I had kind of touched on this briefly beforehand, is this idea of, of diagrams, right? These, what we call these alternate views of the map. And the, the, the real key here is that these diagrams are tied to the GIS components. So as I update and edit my GIS, these diagrams can be kept in sync. So no longer do I have a separate set of diagrams that, that may represent uh, a facility, that are out of sync with what's really going on in that in that central uh, system of record. Um, there's a whole bunch of different layouts that I can apply. There's this kind of geo schematic, uh, smart tree layouts, junction layouts, and you can even customize your own. Uh, so this is what uh, a lot of customers are finding out great value in being able to uh, simplify the maintenance of these diagrams for operations folks. And even today, it becomes more important. We have a lot of people working remotely, uh, being able to keep these diagrams updated and in sync with what's really going on in the field is, is really empowering the remote workforce to, uh, to have access to the most current information about these, about these facilities. So there's lots of other sort of key concepts. And if we were to dive into each of these uh, different things in detail, we would probably take two or three hours. So I kind of hit on some of the 
the the uh, the uh, the top ones, the the big value ones. But uh, these are this screen here represents all the other kind of components that make up or capabilities make up the utility network. So if you see something here, we can dive into more details one on one. But uh, I wanted to let you know that um, today I'm going to be kind of focusing on on some of the key tone key concepts that I just showed in the in the previous slides. So with that, uh, let's switch off from the PowerPoint and we'll switch over to the demo portion. Cool, so this is a demo we built. This is kind of taking, as Alessandra said, that same concept. Um, this could be, in this case, we're, we chose to, to represent a small solar facility. This could be a wind or geothermal facility as well. Uh, we do have in the templates the, uh, those, uh, those other domains that, that have those components in them. Um, but the idea here was to show what we could do in a small facility. In this particular case, this example, we have a small solar farm that was built to uh, be an alternate generation to this waste, wastewater treatment facility, and then also backfeed into the grid. Uh, there's a small substation uh, down the line here I'll show you as well. But to get started with this, um, obviously, you know, I have a, a blank map. I have our, our Esri base map imagery. You can see the site here. Um, but the way I was able to get started is, is right here in ArcGIS Pro, I have this uh, solutions, ArcGIS Solutions deployment uh, option. And basically what this allows me to do is directly connect into that solution site. And there's a little deployment tool for me. And what I did is I chose to deploy uh, one of our solution templates. And if I go in here and look under the utility network, you'll see I'll sign into my portal and I can just pick which template. In this case, we're gonna be working on the electric uh, template. Uh, so this has all the components, all the devices, and all the rules about connecting an electric uh, uh, distribution components together. It includes low voltage, which is what I use for this uh, solar farm, medium and high voltage, which I used on the downstream part to connect this uh, solar grid into the network. And so once I deployed that, what I was what I was given is basically a map template that had all these different components and devices that make up my utility network. So I have my devices, my junctions, assemblies, the the lines themselves. And if we open up one of these, you'll see I've got high voltage, medium voltage, uh, and low voltage connectors. So I've got all the different components that make up the model. Um, but to really start, I, I started by taking that original data that we had shown in the last webinar from the as-built, right? So I have these as-built survey locations of the arrays. Uh, so these are just polygon objects that I've added to my map. And on top of those polygons, we also had the GPS location of the individual panels within this grid. Now, from a system of record perspective, I could take these simple points and polygons, create a map, and start distributing this out to my field crews so they can see where things are. I can embed business attributes into this, but I really don't get a sense of how this uh, facility is working in a, in a real electrically connected sense. So what I did from this data is start building out basically a utility network. And that utility network started with the, uh, the lines. Well, actually it started with the structures themselves. So the arrays we built in, as uh, structure boundaries. So using those polygons from the as-built survey, we built utility network objects, which are these uh, solar, uh, solar arrays. Then from there, we were able to start building in devices and junctions along with assemblies, the uh, electric lines themselves, and, uh, and structure junctions. So let's start exploring this model a little more. And you can see as I start turning on these layers, I start seeing these objects show up on the map. So in this particular example, I've got the, the low voltage side shown here, the DC low voltage side shown here in yellow, uh, coming off the, the arrays uh, into an inverter here in this building. Uh, the inverter then goes over to a, a three-phase transformer, which then shifts power off here to the, um, steps it up to 12 kV, ships it off here to the wastewater treatment plant, which they then have their own transformer, then that drops it down to, to 220.110 to power this facility. And then we also show how we're taking this, uh, this power off this transformer onto the grid, onto the poles, 
And basically what we're doing here is we're modeling what that overhead line would look like coming down those poles, eventually making its way into a substation here with a fuse and a, and a meter that would then uh, push this, uh, this electricity that we're generating and back feed it into the grid. So that's the basic cadence of this demo of, of what we built. And, and obviously, we would have much larger solar sites that are much more complicated. But this small site here shows us a lot of the basic premise that I want to go through. So one of those key tenants that I talked about uh, to start is this idea of containment. So you can see we've got a lot of these low voltage lines that then uh, come down into this uh, facility here. And so within the facility, what I've done is represented a bunch of components within this building. So here I've got um, the end of line terminators. I've got some circuit breakers here. I've got a control unit. This is a set of batteries and then coming into the inverter, which then translates out uh, into the uh, into the medium voltage line down into the uh, into the transformer. Uh, so you can see it looks like I just have a bunch of points here, but one of the other contexts I have is to be able to look and see that these are all are all contained within this container. And if I simply look at my utility network, what I'm done now is I've just flipped over, and because I have utility network objects in my um, in my view here, I get this utility network toolbar. And so I'm just going to hit the modify tool inside the utility network. I'm going to select on this building. You can see I have a bunch of rules here. I've got some connectivity rules, but what I'm mostly interested in is this containment rule. And if I click on containment, you can see that this building contains 15 features. And these are all those components you can see as I click on the highlight them in the map that are contained within this, this facility. So this is how I can start building up that um, that view of these components. And more importantly, I can kind of clean up the map. So if I didn't want to see all those components at this level, I can sort of hide the contain the, the idea or the objects in the container. And then I'm zoomed out to this view. We'll just take a minute for the map to refresh. It'll sort of hide all those details and that are going in inside that facility. There we go. So so now I've I've sort of these are all connected objects. I can hide those on the on the 2D map, and if I want to show those details, I can dive into that com into that uh, into that container and see more details. Now I can have containers within containers as well. Uh, one of the ways that we've done this is, is sort of coming back here to this um, to these panels. So I talked about having this sort of solar array object, but then what we did is we took those GPS points and actually created individual objects. For the individual uh, individual uh, panels within these objects, and I have these set up as containers as well. So if I wanted to to show that, I could easily click on this uh, container here, and when I enter this container, this will then go ahead and display all those objects inside of that inside of that uh, inside of that array container. So this will open up the containment mode. And now once I'm in this containment, but whenever I do any edits or I do any modifications, any objects that I add will automatically be added to this container. So these will bring up the arrays in a second. Now at first glance, it might look, not look like these are actually connected into the network. Remember, one of the important premises of this model is connectivity. So one of the things I can do with the utility network is I can explicitly define that connectivity. And I've done so inside these panels. If I click on my association view mode here, you can see these uh, splash lines here show all my different connectivity of my different devices. So in this case, I've actually kind of wired in series all the individual panels down to the to, down to the breaker switch, which then transfers into the into the conductors above ground into this. Uh, low voltage switch here into my underground line and eventually back to that uh, array of batteries and into that inverter. So this is now a complete connected network. And if I want to look at that, I simply go back to that modify tool. And here what I'll do, if I just select on this uh, low voltage switch here, and look at my connectivity, I can see all those 
individual cells that are connected together into the model. And I could remove things here. I can connect others through this interface. Um, but the most important part is that these are now part of the overall network. And so if I was interested to see how things, how things are connected together into the model, let me just zoom out a little bit, uh, I could go into my utility network and, and run a connected trace. So let's clear the results here. And what I want to do is I want to select and create a, a, a start location for my trace. So here what I'll do is I'll actually create a, um, a start location on this switch here. So this is my overhead DC di disconnect for this, uh, so for this panel array. And what I want to do is I want to see what's connected to this. So I'm going to use this uh, tool in my, in my toolbox here for my connected trace. It's a geoprocessing tool. Uh, it gives me a whole bunch of different options. I can include the containers or include content within those containers. I can also set traversability rules. So if I wanted to stop at a conditional barrier, say an open switch or the next downstream transformer, I could do that. I could set up filters. I could set up functions. A function will allow me to sort of do things like do an average or a count on some variable in the system as I as I iterate over all the con all the connected components. So here, what I'll do is I'll I'll just do a simple trace, a connected trace. I'll hit run now. This will go out to the network, find all those objects that are connected together. And if I close the window and zoom out here, you can see it's discovered all the other individual components that it's connected to. If I zoom out, it's discovered all the other panels down into the transformer over here into the facility, and then down out and discovered all the all the conductors down to the uh, to the substation. Um, but if we zoom on in here, we'll see pretty clearly that I have some devices that it didn't find. So it's interesting that it wasn't able to pick up all these um, all these different devices in this array or these panels in this array. And if I zoom in closer, we'll see why. It looks like I've missed the a conductor connection here in the model. So I've got a break in the network here. I don't have a conductor that's that's connecting me into this um, into this switch. So if I just simply go over to my my create tools here. And I'll just slow, look for a low voltage conductor. And if I just scroll down the list, I'm just doing a search. So here's an overhead low voltage conductor. I'll click on that. I'll click on my um, my switch and into this line endpoint. Grab that. Oops. Sorry, I was still in that containment mode. I was trying to do an edit inside of a outside of the container I was already in. So let me exit the container mode and do that. Okay, let's try that again. So again, I'm going to do that overhead connector. I'll save that. And I'll save my edits. Now, once I've made that edit, I want to go ahead and make sure it passes my rule base. So one of the things that we have in the tool is this validation check, which this validation check allows me to do is uh, check the rule, check the uh, data edits I've done against those the, that rule base. So I'll go ahead and validate that. And if I did it correctly, I'll get a validation successful. And now if I go back to my trace tool, I don't have to do anything more than simply run my trace again. And now you can see it's discovered that switch because I've now connected it. And that switch is connected to all these individual panels. And now that is now part of the network and, and energized. Now I've done that with a sort of drawing lines between things using those conductors. You can see my trace also sort of failed to pick up this whole new solar array over here. So let's let's take a look at what's going on there. 
Uh, what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and show my content so I can see everything that's inside of this um, inside of this container and see what's going on with my connectivity. So I'll zoom back in here to that container. And I can see it looks like I've been able to discover this switch here, but it doesn't jump over to this uh, underground uh, terminator and continue on down the line. So if I want to see my connectivity between my devices, I can just use this view tool here on the utility network toolbar, which will show me all my connectivity. Ah, so I can see I come into this control unit. I can see now all my batteries that are in series going through and then on out to the uh, to the uh, inverter and on out the line. But you can see I'm missing a connection point here. So again, using that modify tool, I can easily go in here. I'm just gonna add this. A low voltage fuse and this time instead of going into the containment I'm going to go into the connectivity I'm going to go ahead and add that connection to that um, to that low voltage uh, solid underground connector apply that and you can see now that because I've I've now connected those together it actually gives me an indication that I have to validate that against the rule base, right? Because this is a connectivity model. I don't need to do anything more, but to, if you can see you down here, I've got these, what we call these dirty areas. So dirty areas just represent where I haven't actually, or, or edits I've made that haven't actually passed the rule base yet. And again, I'll, I've made that edit. I'll hit validate. And again, if I turn on my connectivity now, You'll see those objects are connected together and we can verify that by rerunning the trace and now we can see that whole side of the farm or the solar panels is now all connected into the model so not a lot to do i've got a lot of functionality that i can now perform on this now that i know how things are connected together i can trace and discover things uh, and build up other other workflows now, one of the other interesting things about the model is this idea of, of terminal connections, right? So if I look at this, say this uh, transformer here, or this, uh, sorry, this inverter, uh, this inverter actually has some, uh, uh, some intelligence to it. So if I modify this and I select on this uh, inverter, you can see my connectivity model. Now I have this thing called a terminal. So what I've done here is I've modeled this device to have an input and an output. So my input to this inverter is going to my, be my DC input, which is then connected to my battery. And if I switch the terminal to my AC output, then that's going to be connected to the downstream side in my three phase going down to that downstream transformer. So not only does this point have intelligence of where it is on the map and connectivity, but this now tell, allows me to wire it into the model correctly. And once I give this device intelligence, I can start doing other interesting things like, hey, show me what circuit this thing powers, right? So that, that connectivity and that intelligence intelligent about that allows me to look at the electric lines in different ways, in this case, I've created this circuit that shows me all the things that are down, connected downstream on the AC side of that inverter, which then flows down into that, that, um, that transformer. And then I would have other intelligence at the transformer to show what's connected uh, out of this transformer into the other sides of the lines. We can easily just take a look at that. If we look at this transformer, the transformer also has terminals, so I can see what's on the low side. So the low side of the transformer is going to be my disconnect switch. And on the high side, I'm going to have my two terminals into my, um, my underground conductors that then lead off into the, uh, into the uh, wastewater treatment plant and then back down into the, into the grid. Now, as I enter the grid, I kind of pop out from this underground line and then head up onto the overhead conductors. So here I've got a couple of features going on. I've got uh, a representation of the riser coming out from the underground onto the pole. 
I've got the connection point of the conductor to the pole itself. And then I've got a point feature or what we call a structure that uh, represents the pole. So the structure is uh, this conductor connection point and this underground riser are now associated with that pole. And if I turn that on, you can see those associations. So I come off the underground terminal, I go to the, I associate that uh, underground riser with its uh, termination at the top of the pole, and then that connection point down to the pole. But interesting about this is that these are all, this understands this, this um, connectivity. So as I go into my editing tool, say if I want to move that pole into the correct position, right, as I move that pole, then that terminal on the top of that pole is going to be connected through that association as well. So I could have other objects up there. I might have a, a pole mounted transformer or other a fuse or other equipment on top of connected to this pole. These will all work together. And you can see I, because I made that edit, I trigger that dirty area. I simply validate the model. Everything passes the rule base and we're off to the races. And if I just refresh my connectivity view, you can still see everything's still connected in the model. If I rerun that trace, I'll still discover all these objects. Now, say I wanted to get a sort of an alternative view of what's going on in this facility. I'll go back to my trace example, but this time, instead of tracing the entire network, I'm going to go ahead and I'm creating, going to create an artificial barrier. And I'm going to create that barrier here at the transformer as we go off site. And we'll stop it on the, uh, let's say we'll stop this on the low side of that transformer as we, as we trace through it. So I'm going to do a connected trace again from this part of the network all through it. But this time I want to stop here at this transformer. I'll hit run again. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a selection set for me uh, on the map. So I can do some other interesting things with this. And one of those things I can do is then take that selection set. Uh, let me just save my edits. I can take that selection set and and and. Uh, and move it right into a diagram view. So in this particular case, I'm going to pick up this um, these objects that I've selected in my trace, and I'm going to create a new uh, basic diagram from it. So what this is going to do is going to read all those GIS objects. It's going to open up a new map tab for me, and then place those objects into that map tab using that diagram layout. So you can see I've picked up all those objects uh, in the model. It's kind of a simplified view of the map. This is what uh, by default would be a geoschematic view. You know, kind of think of this as the subway map view of this facility. Um, all my objects in the map are just like they would be if I was, uh, was in a map diagram. So I can change symbology, I can change labeling uh, and uh, hide objects, turn objects on and off in this view. But this is a live link back to my, uh, my map. And I can also change the layout of this diagram as, as well. So say instead of a geoschematic schematic diagram, I want to visualize this as a mainline tree. I've got all kinds of options of how that tree layout runs. I'll just hit apply. It'll apply all that to the diagrams. And after this finishes, Now I've got this sort of mainline schematic view of all those all those arrays, and you can see I've done a couple of uh, I've been experimenting with connectivity, so I have some of the arrays are connected in series, so the individual panels are connected in series together to the thing, and I have a couple of these panels that are 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 connected in parallel, so each of the individual uh, our uh, arrays inside or individual panels inside the array are connected in parallel back down to that point. So now I can really see that uh, that different modeling approach. And again, the important part is this is all live linked to the map. So if I'm interested in this particular uh, panel, I can just select it here in the diagram and I can apply that selection set back to my map. And if I switch back here, 
and I zoom in, I see exactly where that is. And this works both directions. I can select on anything in the map and apply it back to the diagram as well. And the nice thing about this in, in ArcGIS Pro is I can actually dock these windows side by side. So now I'm getting a, 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 a 2D map window along with my schematic and I can interact with these both at the same time. If I add another panel, I simply go back to my diagram, hit refresh, and it will refresh my schematic. I can I can change the layout, I can change the symbology, publish this out to PDF or send it out to the portal and allow my operations folks to have access to this visualization as well. That brings me back to my last point is, you know, I've got, I've been working primarily with this uh, 2D map um, but most importantly is because I'm using, I'm in the ArcGIS Pro environment, I have an integrated view uh, of the 3D world as well. So all I simply did was take my original as-built drawing that I received from the contractor, uh, loaded it into this 3D scene, and then dropped my utility network objects, uh, those electric lines connections, uh, into the same view. So now I'm seeing a connected network diagram, a connected diagram, a 2D map, as well as a 3D map of those facilities. So if I wanted to start really getting into details and mapping out exactly where these components are, say underneath, uh, that might exist underneath these uh, individual uh, arrays, I could start accessing and placing in three dimensions utility network objects all connected to the model, uh, be able to do tracing from here, do selections, again, move back and forth between my 2D world, my 3D world, keep these in sync. So I can just dock this off to the side. I can sync these views together. And as I move around the two, 3D world, I move around the 2D world as well. So again, everything I've showed you today, I just built by downloading a template right off our website, brought it into ArcGIS Pro. The utility network is part of the ArcGIS uh, Pro platform now. So there isn't an additional extension. If I'm an ArcGIS, if I'm licensed from ArcGIS Pro at 10.8, .10 I'm now also licensed for this utility network functionality. And I basically brought intelligence and tracing and a rule base to all these objects that I had coming in from my simple mapping from my, from my as built. So lots of other potentials. We've got all kinds of different workflows. Um, the important part of this as well is these are simple features. These are points, lines, and polygons. So I can now take this map, take this model, publish it to my portal, publish it to ArcGIS Online, bring these objects into a web map, bring them into a mobile display, and have the same experience of containment, connectivity, and tracing across the organization to enable these uh, higher level workflows. Awesome, yeah, thanks so much, Jeff. I know that's something we haven't seen in renewables and something we were really excited to show the industry so they could understand what utility network is and its capabilities and features. So um, I always like to do a recap after our demos. So, you know, through the advanced network modeling, visualization and analysis and architecture, and of course, security of the ArcGIS utility network, we really immediately unlocked that highly powerful capabilities right off the bat. And that holds um, immense business value. So this slide that Jeff brought up um, a lot of times, you know, people ask me or ask everyone at Esri, okay, how do I get to AI and machine learning, or I want to do 3D, and I want to bring in drones. This is why we spent time on utility network today, because this is really where a good foundation of data management comes into play to get to those higher level capabilities with your geospatial technology. So. We're really taking a step back and setting up good practices in data management to set us up for success in those higher capabilities. So, I mean, really, utility network is a double jackpot here and that you'll receive immediate um, business value with those kind of workflows on the lower end of the screen, as well as set yourself up for long term capabilities with extraordinary business value. And on the next slide. Um, we always like to show what we used in the demos as well. 
like Jeff said, um, ArcGIS Pro Utility Network and even free ArcGIS solution templates. So um, we're able to work with a high performing model that was scalable. We were able to model all significant parts of our network and we enforced data integrity and um, in the long term reduced any data entry errors and really provided that comprehensive view of our network. Um, and those ArcGIS solutions, if you're not familiar, that website hosts free industry-specific configurations for ArcGIS that Jeff pulled in and worked with right away. So that really helps you get started. And now time for questions. I did see a couple come in. So number one, um, hopefully y'all aren't more confused than a termite in a yo-yo after watching this demo. Um, so how do I get started with ArcGIS Utility Network? Um, like Jeff said, if you're in ArcGIS Pro 10.8, it is part of ArcGIS Pro. You can use Utility Network right away. Um, as always, we're your account team. So if you are just, you know, really lost, don't know where to start, reach out to us. That's why we're here. We're here to help you implement these best practices and understand the technology and how it really brings you business value. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Jeff? Yeah, no, and, and I think the other part of that as well is, you know, when, when you start this journey of, of sort of building out that central repository, right, there's there's a lots of stages to that. You don't just go like from zero to a thousand right away, right? So we, we have customers that do small proof of concepts or a small pilot project to really kind of flush out exactly what they need in their rule base, what they need in their model, and kind of connect those requirements to what they're actually trying to do for an ROI for the organization, right? So everybody has a different set of circumstances and everybody has a different sort of workflow for this. There is a basic cadence behind this and we can help you understand what that ROI is and understand how you would sort of move into a, a ultimately a, a full production environment using these tools. Exactly. Um, the next question I saw was, you know, Maybe they're not ready to take that next step into ArcGIS Utility Network, but how do they learn more? How do we get uh, more information about ArcGIS Utility Network? So a couple things I wanted to mention, and then I'll let Jeff add on. Again, your account team here at Esri, we're here to help you. There is a ton of documentation on ArcGIS Utility Network. I mean, if you, if you search Utility Network, you're gonna get all the information. We have that geospatial community um, GeoNet that you can actually ask questions and us on the Esri staff answer those or your peers in the community. There is um, free Esri training that you're, you can take with your ArcGIS products. There's lots of utility network classes as well as a very specific hands-on two-day training that's available. So if you need us to help you, help point you in the right direction, again, we're here to help you with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll add on to that. You know, when I first started working the utility network, you know, because the utility network is cross domain, there's a lot of things that, you know, we, we gave naming and nomenclature to, so it would be generic, right? It could translate from electric to water to gas to all the other different utilities. So when you first get into it, it may, fe may seem foreign to you. Um, on the two day training is awesome. Like. I got in there, played with it, sort of figured it out, took the training, got the aha moment. And once I figured out the basic cadence between associations and connectivities and how to wire up the network, uh, I was off to the races, right? And then it's just really understanding the individual components within your domain. Um, I'm, I'm, my background's in pipeline and gas, right? But I'm able to look at an electric rule base and go, oh, this connects to this and this can connect to this and I understand it uh, and was able to build out a model fairly easily even without a deep understanding of, of sort of electric domains. So um, it may seem daunting at first, but actually once you get into it, it's quite simple. Mm -hmm. And another question we just saw, I'll let you answer this, Jeff. Um, does ArcGIS Utility Network connect to OSI Soft's PI system? Yeah, so this is a kind of what we're actually going to get into in the next webinar is how do we bring sort of real-time data into these fixed assets, right? So think of this as more of a master data problem where we have, uh, say, a meter or a controller panel, and we want to see real-time information from that, from a third-party system, where it's OSI soft or, or other types of uh, SCADA system, or even people and, and vehicles, right? They're all what we call high velocity data. And so the, the, the sort of magic here is that we can, in the platform, manage that high velocity data, 
next to the physical assets and join them together and, and really have an operational view. So really keep an eye out for that next webinar because we're going to take this this sort of core concept of utility network and marry it up with that high volume streaming data and show you what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those were all the questions, kind of general questions we had. Obviously, um, more specific questions, we'll reach out to you directly and answer those for you. Or here's our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us. If you're in renewables, you probably know us already. But again, thank you so much for joining us today. And we really look forward to seeing you at the next webinar, which will be the last of the year. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.